Excellent. Okay, so we've got uh, Deb now, and she's going to talk about uh, Media Goblin, and she'll undoubtedly fill us in on the uh, subtitle and the meaning of it. So, over to you. Thanks. I will. Um, great. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm going to toss it over my shoulder so I don't knock it off my face. Um, this is for someone with a much bigger ear. <laughs> okay, so uh, are people already familiar with Media Goblin? None. Okay, great. Blank sponges. Fantastic. Um, oops, sorry. I'm really trying to keep that on my face. So uh, Media Goblin is a decentralized hosting service for artists. It's multimedia. Uh, it's different uh, from stuff like uh, SoundCloud or YouTube or Flickr or SlideShare or any of those things because instead of being organized by the media type, it's organized around the person who's presenting stuff. I know uh, that most artists, like they don't only pr produce stuff in one medium. They tend to have like, oh, I have some writings over here and I have photos. You know, so if you're... Uh, and things like that. And so we wanted to have something that was organized around the creator instead of having silos go to one place for your video and one place for your sounds and, you know, because that seems sort of artificial. Um, the other thing that uh, we worked really hard on is it's, of course, all free software and uh, it's customizable. And when I say decentralized, it's organized so that you could run a small server. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, what you would host there, uh, our first media type was ASCII art, because we're nerds. And, um, and also, it's, a, it's a lightweight, so we could solve the storage problem after solving the hosting problems. Uh, but it now also supports sound and video. Probably folks have seen the Big Buck Bunny from the Blender Foundation stuff. Um, and uh, we also support 3D modeling. So this is, uh, this is like kind of our little mascot with the artist beret there. And uh, folks can share their 3D models and then use the files to print them out or tweak them if, it's, you know, if the model itself is licensed in a way that's shareable. Uh, and uh, just uh, this past year, we added um, hosting papers and documentation of different types formatted and nice and rather than just kind of a big spill of WordPress stuff. Uh, and you might have noticed like so uh, the ones that I showed you so far are kind of the dark gray with white text but because it's customizable uh, you can build your own. This is one of the themes that one of our current users and contributors put up which he calls uh, Sandy 70s. So he put kind of this like spacey 70s font and then made it like a nice bright but not, you know, stark white kind of background. So, and there are other there are other themes like on other instances. So, if you wanted to have it look a certain way for your work, you could customize it or maybe pick another theme that someone else has got. Um, the other thing, like I said, decentralized. So, when you use YouTube, it's all in one umbrella. It's just one huge entity that owns and lets you host all of your things. And it's the same with Flickr, it's the same with SoundCloud. The goal for Media Goblin is for lots of small nodes to talk to each other. Uh, it turns out that hosting a lot of different media types is an easier problem to solve than having a lot of small nodes talk to each other. So we're still working on the small nodes talking to each other. Um, a little bit more about us. It's a GNU project, so um, we're one of the only GNU projects that is not something that goes into a distribution. <laughs> so that c created some uh, special problems, particularly uh, all of the GNU projects are supposed to compile with make, and since we're a web service, that doesn't really make any sense for us. Uh, but uh, we, we got, we got an exception. Uh, also, uh, one of the few projects in the world. So uh, that's, are people familiar with the AGPL? It's like the GPL, but for the web. So. Um, a lot, of, a lot of companies that use free software have that free software on their own server so they don't share back their changes. But with AGPL code, it's shared to anyone who comes to your website. So, uh, so we chose this kind of Uber free software license for the web because we want other people to use it. And, uh, and we want other people to improve it and share it and you know, give us their comments. 
Um, this is really, I'm sorry. Can you guys hear me mostly when it's not on my face? Okay. I'll just, it's, it's just for a much, much bigger ear. Oh, yeah, that would be great. Thank you. I just, okay. Uh, cool. So you might, you might ask yourself, like, you know, why, why do I want a decentralized service instead of, like, a giant centralized service? Uh, you know, so there's a lot of reasons for that. Maybe I can, there we go. Can you guys hear me now? All right, great. Um, so the reason you want that is because it's responsive. And when I say responsive, uh, has, has anyone ever tried to, like, get YouTube or Flickr to do something for them? <laughs> How'd that work out? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Because they, they actually, they don't really care. <laughs> um, but so when I say responsive, it's uh, one, we're just a bunch of folks. Uh, so you can always come into the Media Goblin channel and be like, hey, why, why can I only upload like 20 photos at a time? Like my camera holds 200, can, can I do that? And we were like, oh, yeah, great, that's, yeah, maybe we can do that. So we're very responsive, uh, but not when the NSA calls. <laughs> which is kind of a little different. And if you're hosting your own Media Goblin instance, then it's up to you to decide what you want to tell the NSA or what's the equivalent in New Zealand? Yeah, okay. So instead of calling, like, one, you know, massive service to say, like, we don't like this, you know, content or we would like to have all the content uh, and calling, like, just, you know, like, ten different companies, like, call up YouTube, call up Flickr, call up Gmail and be like, we'd like all the content and, you know, because we're the NSA. Uh, and, and that leaves the individual, like, kind of stuck. You know, you're, you don't really have any, no one has your back. So um, when you have a small instance, the goal is to be so legion that they, like, are you kidding me? We have to make 3,000 phone calls now to get all the content, and it's climbing every year, right? That's the goal. So uh, we actually want to be a pain in the butt for the NSA. Um, the other thing is that uh, when, when you have like a giant hosting service, they have these terms of service, which may be kind of arbitrary or they may be for really specific reasons, but you can write your own terms of service if you're running your own instance. So like we have uh, different folks in our community that run different types of content. Like there's, you know, we have a lot of pictures of hacker babies and that's like really nice. And then we have over here like you know, weirder anime art, which is like, you know, slightly different, like what you're allowed to post. And that's totally fine. Uh, we, we encourage everyone to provide the service that they want for their community, or maybe just for their household. So we have a lot of just one household uh, type of things. Uh, the other thing that uh, having a small service means it's up to you if you want to run automated copyright takedown. Has anyone run afoul of this type of a thing? where like you posted something and then it got, yeah, it's super fun. Did you try to contest it and get it put back? Yes, because what I posted was totally unrelated to what the copyright claim was for. And mm -hmm. it was just like, well, I don't know, you know, it was, yeah. Yeah. It is, because uh, what they, what the, the large content providers uh, have is they run a script and if they hit any words like if you're like this was a Mickey Mouse operation like zzz, Disney you're just like take that down until we get a chance to look at it you know so it's uh, they have like these triggers that they look for and then they automatically take down suspected copyrighted material which uh, so this happened to the open movie from the Blender Foundation I forget what the word there was some word in there that uh, they thought oh, maybe, maybe that belongs to Sony. And it's like, really? It seems like we spent thousands of hours on the animation for that, so I don't know how it could, but, you know, and it was, it was like something in, like, some collection of words that just twigged the Sony's automatic takedown uh, script, and then it was like, yep, please take that off YouTube until we get a chance to look at it. It's back up now. Uh, it took some time. So for stuff that, like, you can see, you know, like, Sintel is, it's, it's a fantasy cartoon type of thing. But for political commentary, if you're like, oh, I want to show this clip of the news show and provide timely commentary, 
And then it's like, oh, please take that down. It belongs to the news station. And then, like, two months later, like, oh, okay, you can have your now completely untimely commentary on copyrighted news programming. So the, there's some issues there. Um, and having one giant service where they're like, uh, the number of employees that can deal with those kinds of requests, like, there's just no money in it for them. They're never going to do it. Um, I don't know if people know... Uh, there's, there's like a, it's not Moore's Law, but it's something else about like the number of users to the number of employees at any given software or service that you might use has gone like, you know, where it's like 10 million users to like three employees, and it used to be like 100 users to two employees. And so the ability to respond when you're running a giant cloud service like this is just like, it's just not going to happen, which is why we think that the way to go forward is smaller stuff. So, um, so you can kind of see like the way that this would go differently, where like everyone is in charge of their own node, they deal with their own copyright takedown notices, um, and they can decide what they, you know, how they want to handle them. And if it's something where they're like, oh, we think that that might, you know, be uh, content that would, you know, jeopardize someone or it's illegal or something, you can, if it's your friend running the server, they might be like, hey, I got this uh, call. You might want to decide what you want to do about that. Um, so, so that's kind of what we want to provide, is a more democratic web. Um, just so you kind of know who we are, uh, we're uh, free software activists. Uh, Chris Weber and I started working on this project. He's the technical lead, and I work on our outreach stuff. And um, Chris used to work at Creative Commons and uh, is very interested in providing services for artists to share and, you know, uh, free software tools that folks can use. Uh, I worked at the Free Software Foundation for a number of years. My background before that, like, I have a degree in painting. I sing in bands, like, all kinds of stuff. So we really want this to be um, not, like, a... Software just for software people, if that makes sense. So you can, there's a picture of us, not, not me, but uh, other folks. Um, we're also part of a W3C working group. That's the Tim Berners-Lee organization. So in addition to working on having, um, you know, decentralization for our own stuff, we want to create a standard that a lot of different services can use. So we're working with the, Folks at um, Pump.io uh, .io with the Identica stuff. I don't know, people are using Identica or the Pump, Pump Dog or something. It's like the free software microblog. Um, and uh, the folks at IndieWeb. And so this would be a standard that could be used by GNU Social. It could be used by uh, Friendica and some service that doesn't even exist yet. So we wanted to create a Python library that any sort of decentralized service could use to handle the federation part, which, as I mentioned, is the part that's more of a pain in the butt than hosting media. Um, so not just for us, uh, and you know, so that's that's kind of where we're uh, where we're going forward. So we're having those conversations. We want to have an official standard sanctioned by the W3C that federated social services can use for media, for whatever, who knows, maybe we'll have smell vision in the future, we can support that too. Um, so we're working on trying to prevent the sad, um, it is not actually made of kittens, uh, although sometimes it seems that way. Uh, just, this is kind of the technical specs on it, so it's, it's Python, it's an SQL database, and then um, Chris decided we should write our own Django-like framework from scratch, um, and then the Pio library, which is the one that will be usable by anybody. Um, we chose SQL because uh, it's kind of funny, actually, because we had started with Mongo. We had like a lot of no SQL fans uh, in our community, but um, it turns out that the newer stuff is built for bigger servers, and it doesn't scale down gracefully, which is a, kind of a funny thing when uh, most people talking about databases are looking for stuff to scale up. So uh, hosting a lot of small nodes means it has to be able to scale down. So SQL it is. 
Uh, and it's it's pluginable. We've been very careful about making it such you know that you can take one chunk of the code without like kind of pulling the whole thing up and be able to use those plugins in different ways. And we want people to, if there's new media types that we haven't thought of, like a you know probably not smellovision. I think that's gone the way of the jetpack, but it's you know some new media type that might come up. We would be able to support that. So. Um, so how can you guys help? I'm so glad you asked, right? Um, so uh, you can always give us money. I do know this is the artist and musician track, so I don't really expect to get giant checks here. But um, you know, uh, not that we'll turn them down. Uh, but we're actually we're mostly funded. We've done two crowdfunding campaigns. Uh, we raised over $120,000 for that. Um, some grants, some weird ones for like governments that wanted us to um, build a way for them to serve like their pictures on their websites and things like that. Uh, I think it was the Icelandic government wanted that, which is cool. Uh, and some customization work where people have wanted, like, can you guys do a little bit more work on the subtitles for um, people who uh, can't hear? So, uh, so we've, you know, we've been pulling money in that way. If you know someone that uh, would want to hire us for that stuff, let us know. Um, but, you know, more so than money, this is probably more of a time or uh, complaints. We actually really like to hear complaints um, or feedback, I guess, if you want to put more kind of positively. So um, like most software projects, we need folks to help us with all of the you know, user testing, bug triage, documentation, blogging, promotion, um, all of that kind of stuff. But Especially what we want is more artists and musicians. Because uh, as I, I said before, we really want this to be a project that is not software for software people. So we're, we've been working really hard to make it something that regular folks can use. Um, hosting your own server, uh, unfortunately, is not yet trivial. So we've been pursuing a couple of different avenues for making that easier. We've been working with the Sandstorm IO, IO folks who are working on making it, uh, they're building software to abstract the uh, kind of nuts and bolts of serving your own service. So they've, you know, they have been doing that for, not just for us, but a number of other free software projects that you might want to uh, host your own of. Like an, uh, if you wanted to have your own Identica server, There's a, they have a whole list. So they're working on making it really nice to, abstract the twiddly bits of serving sandstorm io and they're they're great um uh, we really want it to be super easy to install the another avenue that we've been pursuing is talking to different GNU linux distributions and seeing can can we get it packaged so that you can run it off your uh, laptop and have it come you know so you can just get it like apt-get or yum or whatever and then have media goblin as a server running along with the rest of your distribution so we've been looking at that there's a, a couple of little nuts and bolts in there if you uh, run uh, if you work on a distribution besides fedora or debian who we're already talking with and want to help with packaging media goblin let me know because uh, we'd be super excited to be on all the distros um, and then, uh, yeah, so that's kind of what we're looking for. Um, we really do want your feedback. If you want to come in and tell us, like, what's missing, what's, what's not there yet, what would make it awesome, basically anything you can think of that would stop you from wholeheartedly recommending this to your less technically savvy musician and artist friends, we want to hear it. So um, I'm afraid I spoke really quickly because I drank too much coffee. but. Uh, now I have more time for questions. So uh, if, you, if folks have questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions? Yeah. What? Oh, uh, maybe if the Wi-Fi is working. Um, hmm. The question was about a demo site. Yeah, uh, so you can go to um, actually mediagoblin.org, uh, uh, which was the one up here. So mediagoblin.org has, that's one, and then the jpope one, and there's a list of some other demonstration sites. So it's a, uh, different ones have different mixes of uh, media types because of what that person is interested in sharing. Um, and, uh, you know, and some of them are uh, 
because it's free software and customizable, some of them are uh, different levels of shared to the public because you can, there's something between everyone and no one, unlike most web services. So, but yeah, uh, if you go to mediagoblin.org, you should find at least there our main site, and then I think there's a list of some other ones too. And uh, I brought stickers, but I don't have my. They're in my suitcase, which didn't arrive yet. Uh, but if you see me later this week, I would be happy to share some Media Goblin stickers. Anyone else? Are you guys ready to test it or give me complaints, feedback? Yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. Thanks so much. Of course. Thanks, Gabe. Okay, go ahead.